Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 53 or 54, one of those two, I didn't bother to look it up, of Meeting of the Monster Houses. We are joined once again by Draxos, but we're now missing the wizard, so still on three. Here we go. That is a lot of equivalent exchange. Yeah. A soul to... for a soul. I'm going to have to keep an eye on Theo, so that's fine. Um, but last we left off, you guys uh, closed the second of the three demonic gates leading to the hells and other places. Um, freed Ashgate from vampire oppression and are now heading toward the uh, settlement of Old Kenso, where you know the third portal to be. You found along your way a wayward half-orc named Brague, who was escaping, it seems, Old Kenso and being chased by other... Uh, demons and half demons and other things into a canyon uh, you rescued him brought him aboard your ship and learned a little bit about his story and what's going on in old Kansa. and that's where we'll pick up right now so short version shit's fucked yeah pretty much so uh, I believe you guys did you guys rest at the end of the last one yes okay Matt, so did we rest at the end of the last one I think so. You no. You left. <laughs> you left the thing. So, uh, so everyone, the ship is parked on the ground and disguised. Um, what is it disguised as? Uh, the surrounding area. Like it just looked blind with the terrain. Okay. <clears throat> Lucidatory terrain. A very useful spell. So you wake up, uh, and you guys are all doing your your stuff about the ship, getting ready to go, eating food, etc., uh, etc. Et Brig is helping out as best he can. He's pretty strong, uh, obviously, so he's able to heft a lot of the, you know, the barrels and stuff and keep up with you guys. Not too big a deal. Um, everyone else, uh, go ahead and make me a perception check. Except for Draxus. Perception check? I'm, I'm good at those, though. Absolute fucking ass. Shouldn't you get a disadvantage because you have one eye? <laughs> well, no, I mean, yeah, it patch functions like an eye. It just it works normally. I just get I the hate, fucking. I hate right. it that there was both in and out of character. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like Orion screaming at God. I mean, easy enough. You both, both of you, see a little cloud of dust moving across the desert um, about about a mile away a little cloud of dust moving across the horizon perpendicular to, or parallel to you guys just on a ship and and if only we had a spy glass but I don't think anyone wanted to spend the fucking 10k gold why the fuck was that thing, is that thing fucking 10,000 gold what? because optics Again? are expensive I've never understood that how a spy glass is that fucking expensive. I mean, it's really useful. Because you have to get crystal right lenses now. that are properly treated and cut, which in medieval periods is not the easiest thing. You're, you'd and be if correct, you want it to actually magic. Be, and if you that, wanted it to be toggleable, you would have to have mechanisms inside the damn thing. Like, it's literally just a thousand gold. Hunter, it... tell me where the fuck you're gonna find a magic spell that makes perfect crystal lenses. Oi! The cloud of dust continues to move across the horizon. <laughs> it is now on your left. Uh, I mean, I ready my bow. I mean, it's... It's a mile away. It's a cloud of dust moving. Is it heading towards us, that's, or...? No, it's heading... not going to stop me. It's heading it's only... away from you. I mean, obviously, it's not going to head toward a gigantic rock or whatever you disguise the ship as. Uh... Eagle familiar, go. Okay, so you send you out your eagle familiar. He flies out above... Above the... 
above the cloud and catches up with it. And uh, hey, by the way, it strikes us on a on a beautiful <laughs> shining pony, <laughs> or whatever you decided to do. I don't know what you decided to do. Are we still uh, doing the bit that he's a princess? Sure. Hell yeah. White horse, golden mane. Hell yeah. Cool. So he's riding a princess horse, <laughs> and galloping across the plains. Uh. Upon seeing this, the eagle. Well, it's it's a sentient familiar. I I've never given it a personality or anything like that. I forgot. <laughs> I didn't realize that was part of my Holy job. Shit. <laughs> I mean, you know. I've had this thing for how long now? Uh, Don't worry about it. Like, like a month and a half. Uh, the eagle is gonna swoop past Draxos and then like make a large like arc, wrapping back around, trying to like direct Draxos towards the ship. Okay, so oh. <laughs> Draxos, a fucking eagle, flies in front of your face, <laughs> like like two feet from it. You're like freak out. The horse freaks out a little bit. Yeah, we both fall and slam our feet now, um, <laughs> and then f and then flies off, off and then flies off in a direction, flies off in a direction, and then starts circling you, your head. Wow, that's one fucking stupid. Per oh, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, and he's gonna go follow that bird. Okay. No hesitation. He's like, what a stupid. Bird. Oh, it's a riot. So you start riding a toward uh, toward a, a, a large rock formation that you saw in the distance, um, and you figure out oh, they're taking they're meeting you know camp up there or something, and then um, the uh, the bird is flying toward toward the rock, and you're like, well, I gotta stop. This thing is gonna be fucking flying through, and then the bird flies through the rock and disappears. Ah, uh, uh, I'm gonna go. <laughs> Definitely gonna hop off my horse. Want to get like, get a good area, or get close to it. I'm uh, definitely just gonna go grab a rock and throw it at it. Yeah, the rock goes right through the wall. All right, just had to make sure. No, and I'm gonna lead my horse in. Just walk it in to the rock. <laughs> okay. I'm oh, sorry. I was <laughs> that horse at... is very confused right now. Isn't I was it? I was looking at something. Uh, no, you've seen this spell before. You know what it is. You just didn't recognize yeah. it, obviously, because it's a high level illusion. Yeah. I was gonna say, <laughs> I was I had to look up something because I couldn't remember if your horse just understands language or if it can speak. It well, can't <laughs> speak. Draxos, before Drax is like shipped off to help out the others. He's seen Grisha cast the spell before. Yeah, that's what I said. He just didn't recognize it from that far away. Yeah. And he didn't have a chance to save from it because he wasn't near it. Um, but with the bird flying through it, he's like, oh, this is probably that spell. So. Yep. So, uh... <laughs> I'm sorry. I, the, the horse goes through the fucking illusion, like, fine, right? Like, there's no worries about that. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, I was gonna... I was gonna have trouble convincing a horse to walk through a rock, you know what I mean? Uh, the horse has yeah. an intelligence of six, but listens to you, so... Hell yeah. Um, so, on the other side, I'm assuming I just see the ship, the companions, everything like that. Mm -hmm. Yep, you see the ship awesome. basically parked in the sand, with everyone else kind of waving at you over the railing, including uh, what looks to be an orc, or a half-orc, who is kind of quizzically looking at this new arrival. Or he's gonna get a look back. He just, uh, just waving back to everybody, waving that guy, and then just kind of looking at the half orc, like, oh, who the fuck's this guy? Uh, that'd be a long story. Well, not I got long, actually. It, yeah, well, I, I got time. Uh, we were flying off to our next destination, and we saw something going on. We saw someone uh, being chased by a group of uh, demons. Yep, yeah, that's what they are. And we followed. Found this one fighting and probably would have been dead if we didn't step in. Yep, mm. definitely. As soon as they caught him, I thought I was done for. Name's, uh, oh, name's Break, by the way. 
spray uh, Draxus. Draxus Pagar. You're uh, one of them silver paladins, eh? Mm-hmm. Well, you don't have anything to worry about from me. I, uh, I respect your order, even if we're on opposite sides. A lot of my tribe is kind of the same way. Mm. Devoted to a singular being and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, which being? Our leader was um, the best of us, and he was a titan among orcs. He would fight fantastical, gigantic beasts of the wastes by himself, often. We have a little ritual when we do, um, you know, the whole coming of age thing, where you become a man, where you go out with a hunting party and kill a purple worm and bring it back to the tribe. Right. He did it by himself. <laughs> Sounds like a legend. He's very legendary. The legend of the blood spear will never die as long as old Cancel remains standing. Although might not be standing for much longer. Only time will tell. Well, as long as you don't cause us issues, I have no issue with you. Right. Simple as that. So, um, uh, what are you all doing here, then? You know what they're doing, there. Uh, We're resting up after getting our asses handed to us by whatever the fuck was down there. Well, at least me in particular. Alright, well, uh, what's the next move then? What's the idea? Well, um, I believe we make it to Old Cancel today. About, uh, well, we've got how many hours of travel? About, uh, four hours? Six hours of travel? Before we get there. Got it. I'll help move bags, see what I can do to help if you need. We're pretty much done here. Uh, are you bringing the horse? Why not? Right. We can't feed it, you know that, right? Uh... Uh... I didn't think that through, did I? It's a... It's a magical horse. Wait, wait uh, actually, where, the, where did you get a horse in the first place out here? Hold on. Oh, wait, shit, I summoned it. Right. I'm sorry, I, he was getting to me. I was lost in thought for a while. Uh, you oh, don't yeah, need to feed him, we're fine. Right. What's his, uh, what's his name? I don't think... Iskandar. <laughs> okay. Is that That's mean cool anything in particular? Matt. I'm not saying anything. Does that mean anything? <laughs> Does that mean anything in particular, or did it just sound cool? Uh, really just sounded cool. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, cool. Excellent. <laughs> Fantastic. I want you to know that that's very, very close to an elvish slang word that I will not repeat here. Now I'm curious. I'd like to hear it. Nope, we're not going to do that. Grisha, would you please lift the ship and get us going? At least tell me what it means in common. Never. Okay, had to try. I go and plant the plant the sword and the thing, and off we get. <laughs> All right. So taking off, flying toward Old Cancel. Windy weather, boy, stormy weather. Boy. The um, as you guys are traveling, um, Brake will eventually come up to to you guys and and say, "Look, I don't know what's causing it. And I don't know what's going on." specifically, but the people in my hometown are, they're, um, they've been acting strange ever since we opened that portal things have been um, odd people don't behave like themselves they're almost catatonic, just going through life people who were you know uh, mighty warriors with strong uh, personalities and things now are, are docile almost and don't they don't seem to take joy in anything 
it's like they're on some kind of straight track. They're not free, it seems. It's like they're being controlled by something, I, I don't know. Okay. Trying to describe that without using the word programming, by the way, is very hard. Right? Like, I try saying autopilot. Yeah, right? Like, what the fuck is autopilot? We don't know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, just, just keeping in mind, that's what you should be looking for. I got out before it happened to me. But, um... You know, just a warning. We'll keep it in mind. Thank you. Um... Alright. Have we found any... How are we going to be approaching the, um... The castle, then? We'll see ideas here. Castle? There's no castle in Old Canso. Is there none? No, of course not. We live in the desert. We use caves. And we use, ah. um... Well, you know, we build our own stuff. Permanent settlement and all that. Right. Okay. Uh, well, I just figured we do our standard plan. Go in. Something attacks us, we kill it. Then we close the portal. Well, that's a good question. So, portal. Where's the best way to get there? What do we do? Because every portal's been different. I don't know. I never saw it. It was deep within the cave system. And people who were not um, initiated were not allowed in. So, uh, Theo Vane, uh, 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 a thought I had the other day, well, well, while I was going to sleep. Uh, I can make myself rather big by uh, my abilities. Yes. You can make something smaller. Technically, yes. So what I'm thinking is, we have a particularly nasty body that we need to deal with. I get big, you make him small, and then I throw him. Like a ball. That idea is so absolutely barbaric, and I love it. What do we need to do? I'm assuming it's two casts of a large reduce, but one on one person and one on the other, right? So they don't cancel yes. out? Hmm. This I can get behind. Well, when the opportunity presents itself, we'll try it out then. Baseball pitch. Never played baseball before. It's an old elvish game. D&D <laughs> &D is fucking post-apocalyptic. It's not our it's not our national pastime, but it's um well, it's a way to relax. Mostly mostly wood elves have the have the game to themselves. Don't really have an no, arena well, for it in Fan of Thrawn, but um as long as you yeah. Too much, hmm? too much water in the swamp. Unfortunately, can't really have a uh, dry fields, sand, and all of that. Too busy training. Yeah, it sucked. Uh, who knows? Maybe we could try it sometime, though. Well, I would teach you, but I'm very unathletic and weak, I, and I can say I, these things about myself because I am Theo now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Theo, for being so. Um, Theo. Theo. You're welcome. This instant. I'm going to go struggle to open a door. I'll be right back. <laughs> this is what's talking about pastimes. What do you walks do? Um, we hunt uh, things. We kill them. Yeah. Bring it back to the tribe. Uh, right. on a, well, we have the arena. But it was buried a long time ago. That uh, I was... We went to the uh, arena and what was it? Bar. 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 Babo? Bardigo? Bless you. Bardigo? Yeah, that. Yeah. What about it? I fought in the arena there. That's fun. Well, there's isn't. There's isn't buried under the sand somewhere. 
Oh, it's Kanso is made on the uh, the ruins of the Dwarven city, but a lot of it was buried under the sand a long time ago. Like, uh, Grisha points to like her uh, purple worm, like carapace, fucking shoulder guard. Yeah, I don't uh, think I, I actually, didn't notice I, that. I, I actually won this in the arena. Took it off. Uh, oh. It was probably from our tribe then. Carrying armor oh. like that means that you've either killed a purple worm or you defeated one of us in combat. There's not a lot of people who can claim to do that who aren't an orc. Well, I'd like to think I'm good at what I do. From what I saw yesterday, <coughs> like from what I saw yesterday, I'm not surprised. Anything else? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. The, the, they're getting very large, but that's actually kind of new. Before that, I just was good at swinging an axe. Well, either way, you matched up to one of us in one. That's respect in my book. And then uh, well, he, then. he looks over the side and says, Oh boy, we're getting close. I recognize those rock formations. All right, let's get ready then. So, how are you guys approaching this? I think we kick in the front door, guys. That's probably the best idea. I'm thinking we could land. We land a ship a ways away, and we go in. <coughs> I think that's the way. It's a good thing Matt's here. Oh, wait. Why is Jax super car typing? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I, I didn't type that. What do you mean? It says Draxos on there. Of course you typed it. Yeah, but... Uh, Matt, does Matt have access to his sheet still? Hmm? No. Only Bryonic does. Yeah. <laughs> you can hear him type! Anyway, what are you guys doing? Um. Yeah. Oh, is Matt still? Uh, Matt's still not here. But what we're basically like keeps cutting in and out. But that's fine. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. Um, I think oh, yeah. the the goal is quite literally just set up a party formation and just start to slowly approach upon the uh, the cave entrance, huh? Because just that's where we're approaching. Like, uh, what fortifications are up, by the way? Like, as we're making our way in. Oh, um... So, the closer you get to the city, I mean, the more obvious it'll be that there's a giant flying ship floating around. So, you're gonna either need to disguise it as something else that makes sense. <laughs> Not giant floating rock. But, um... Uh, you, can either, you can either do that and scout it out from the safety of an illusion, or you can land the ship early and march there. Okay. I mean, but you can't see the city yet. You're still terrain, a little ways away. The story terrain it, it is not a uh, uh, concentration. Mm -hmm. Is it is it centered so on land. a is it centered on a point or a a uh, point of landscape or what? It's just a uh, 150 foot cube. Like it's not it's not a point it's just a cube of area that I select within range which is 300 feet a cube of area is it centered on it a thing uh, or is it just a cube so I mean what I'm what I'm getting at is that would it would it move if you put it on the ship is the question I don't think so natural terrain in a 150 foot cube Okay, so no. Uh, what you could do is, I mean, just an idea, spawn a cloud and then fly into it and, and stay there and then fly away and hope that nobody saw me. Actually, that's really something. We've been using this sorry, terrain to make the ship look like a rock formation. No, no, you've been, and... you've been using the, the, the hallucinatory terrain to make the terrain around the ship look like a rock formation. That's why it hasn't moved with the ship before. 
Well, yeah, I was saying we land the ship, cast a spell, and then you go in. That's what it, that's what the second suggestion was, yeah. So, up to you guys. Uh, can I actually make a request then with, um... Could we have Matt... Could we have Matt's, um... Bird, or an owl or something, like the owl go scout out the ship or something like that. Jesus, if I didn't start so hard there. Scout out the ship? Uh, the, yeah, the the flying... Is there any, if there's any defenses outright that we could see with a closer view in that sense. Scout out the city. Or the yeah, town. sorry. Yeah. I mean, you could, yeah. Um... Would they be able, uh, the ship, that plane? The ship flies faster than the owl, so I mean, you're gonna mm. you're gonna get there soon. The owl can't fly ahead of you though, because it, right, right, it right. won't Makes catch up. Uh, so, yeah. but that would only work if we're like stopping the ship, and I don't think we're doing that, are we? It's up to you. You could land it and hike it, or you could do a so flyby. Mm -hmm. Or you could do a flyby, either one. I feel like the flyby is way more riskier. Wait, I think it's just a little too risky for me. Because, you know, if we lose this ship, we're a little stranded. In the desert. I mean, if it were to make a cloud, part the ship in the cloud, and just fly down by other aspects, we could do that. Because even if we can't get back up before the charges run out, the ship doesn't crash, it just lands normally all right I'm fine with that then uh, how would we get down though uh, we I'm still typing as you by the way what the fuck I noticed god damn it man right. I'm gonna type as a badger <laughs> I could take two of us down and have everyone else having to do it find our own way but if I were to do that and hide the ship in a cloud I would be out of my more powerful my, my more powerful magic would be out of reach for me for the rest of the day Theo you have anything? he's not in discord no I'm saying Theo just oh. didn't care anything to do want? uh get us to float down oh yes I do I prepared that yesterday Jenny you think you get all of us down and we're fine I could we could paraglide down if that works for you guys I yeah, think yeah. I need to cast it at a higher level to do that. Derate? Who the fuck is that? Oh, there's supposed to be a red dragon image there. <laughs> there is no image. I know. I saw that. Sorry. What is he? Okay, so let me let me refresh this real quick. Uh, let me get rid of that. Five. Okay, so. You, four, and then Brag makes five. So that's fine. Yep, I can do that. We can paraglide down using Featherfall. That would be fine. Awesome. Um, Orion. Actually, could Orion use his eagle to scout out the city then? As we park the boat. Uh, it's a cave system, not a city yet. Oh, I'm inbred. I mean, you could try. Same. You don't you don't know what the city looks like at all. Well, from what Bray told us, it was a cave. They're like they're like underground cave system city, hmm. like and fucking under dark shit. Cool. So, as you guys get closer and closer, you begin to see the um, you begin to see uh, structures appearing over the over the dunes, over the horizon. Brake looks out over the, the edge of the ship and goes, Oh, what the hell are they doing? And you can see that there is uh, several um, stone structures um, that are lying around outside of um, a large uh, 
like rock formation. Um, one of which is uh, looks to be a uh, an arena that has been partially dug out of the ground and is partially still in the ground. You can see that there are several um, individuals uh, walking around that location and doing things. You can't really tell from this distance what they're doing, but you can see them walking around. Um, you can also see that there are um, stone houses that have been partially uh, uncovered. And you can see people moving around in there. And this looks like... It looks like a town at the foot of a mountain. The one thing that does um, pique your interest from this far away is there's a, a an odd structure jutting out of the mountain's base straight ahead. Hard to tell what it is from this distance, but the, it looks it looks strange, like almost like a a weird tube that comes out of the mountain's base. Like it comes out horizontally or vertically? Horizontally. Horizontally on the ground. Is, is that our entrance? Yeah, that's our entrance, but I, I've never seen those stone buildings before. What do you mean you've never seen them before? They're new? I don't know. We, we set up tents and stuff outside the outside the entrance, and the, the city that we live in is inside the mountain, but I don't know what those stone buildings are at all. I've never seen them before in my life. And you were here not that long ago, correct? Just making sure? No, it's been a few days. Uh, stone buildings don't appear in a few days! Well, I don't, I, I don't know. Maybe they use magic. I don't know anything. Just Look, I'm, like, they... I'm like a novice warrior, right? I'm not like some kind of, you know, fancy pants smart ass, alright? Dude. Neither are wait I am, shit. Point being is that from my intermediate knowledge of magic, I don't know many people who can just conjure a stone building out of nowhere. That's multiple stone buildings. That's a problem. I mean Theo was Well able I don't to know anyone like that either. Out of nowhere. I don't know that yes, either. Hunter, he's been able to make one temporarily. Those are multiple stone buildings. Technically, See, like, I, Theo says, technically I can make it permanent if I cast it in the same place over and over again. Yeah, how many, how long does that take, Theo? Twelve months or so of consistent casting. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that equal to a few days? Well, my math's a bit rusty, but I don't think so. It could be. Okay. In the infinite Let's... possibilities of the universe, anything's possible, right? <laughs> okay, listen... <laughs> so, uh, regardless, well, it's likely probably due to the whole, you know, you know, portal to the fucking Nine Hells, or the Abyss, whichever one, I forget which. I mean, Both? I don't know. I have no idea. Doesn't matter. Point being, is that those are stone buildings that appeared out of nowhere, and that's a problem because, like, well... I don't know. I mean, it doesn't change the fact that we gotta get in and shut down the portal, but it does make things a little bit strange. It worries me a bit. Powerful magics. Point being, yeah. I could send my uh, familiar and the scout a little bit more, but I don't know how much they're gonna get before they're shot out by a scout. Well, some info is better than no info. Yeah, I know. All right. Good luck, Diane. Again. I <laughs> said Diane. God, now I feel like an asshole. I'm gonna get the ship in a position. I'm gonna s start the process of casting with Tori Terrain. Okay. So as you park the ship and begin casting illusory terrain, um. All, all of you, every single one of you hear this at the same time, over your telepathic link. Uh. It seems some newcomers have come to play. 
Welcome to old, yeah. Welcome to old console interlopers. The fuck is an interloper? Uh, Theo, I I thought you said that. That's kind of our thing. How is that? What? I don't know what that was. I'm just as confused as you are, and a little bit scared. I'm gonna look at the orc, our orc buddy. Uh, did you hear that? Um, no. What are you talking about? Lovely. So, uh, nice me and my friends here have a very powerful magic that allows us to send messages between each other without speaking. It's a form of what's called telepathy. Um, yeah, no. Someone telepathically messaged all of us using our telepathic bond, which shouldn't that... be possible. Okay. I don't know how magic works. I'm, yeah, assuming, I'm assuming that's I am, I am bad? I expl explaining this to you so uh, you I know that's why we're panicking. I think that's not supposed to happen, happened. Okay. I'm explaining this to you, that way you don't think we're fucking whack jumps, Which we are, but I don't want you to think that. Okay. So, all right. So, yeah. All right, we're done now. All right. So, what's the plan? Wait, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to visually link to my familiar before I send it out. What? What, what do you fucking yeah, he mean? Blind, he goes blind and deaf, and he can see through the familiar. Oh, oh, that thing. Sorry. I, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sorry, I was reading something. Uh, yes, you can do it. Go ahead. So, uh, scouting out with the eagle, flying closer to the buildings, you can see uh, through the eagle's eyes a little bit more of the uh, the town. So, the um, the stone houses uh, and buildings and other such structures are preeminently dwarven. Um, I mean, the the square uh, and triangular architecture of this place um, is. You know, 100%, no doubt, Dwarven. Um, you can see um, several orcs, um, some of, a lot of them clad in purple, uh, purple, like, plate mail or, like, bits and pieces of purple worm carapace, uh, are um, rushing around the town and digging out these buildings, moving the sand and dirt and dust elsewhere. Um... The uh, the arena itself also has uh, uh, they're you know they're digging that out as well and it's very very obviously dwarven make um, the the tube that's coming out of the mountain horizontally the entrance to the inner city is um, a skeleton it's the skeleton of a purple worm you can see the razor sharp teeth um, hanging over the the entrance and you can see also like the several uh, curved ribcage like structures that lead into the entrance of the mountain um, in between some of the um, some of the ribcage structures uh, there are uh, tents set up tents and tables and other things indicating that this was once maybe a point of trade but has since been neglected a lot of the tents have been uh, misused or just not in use for a long time, broken down and no one cared about fixing them, like, and this this all looks very recent, like, it's not like the, um, the tents have holes in them forever and they're ratty and disgusting, no, this is, like, well, recent. well made. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what you notice. Is there anything else you want to look oh, for, or are you going to head back? Uh, the positions of like the stone building, things like how exactly they're lined up. Like, I'm gonna them a bit closer. They're lined up in what appears to be a grid. Um, the one outlier is the arena, which is like the only circular structure you could really see outside of uh, 
you know, all the, the square, square and triangular architecture. Um, um, you know, obviously, arena, ovular seating. So that's really the only thing that sticks out to you. Um, go ahead and make me a perception check using the eagle. I think it it's counts as a hawk or something like that. Whatever the basic. I don't actually bird is. have access to it. I do have access to giant eagle, which should be the same carrier. Oh, give me a second. Uh, I have advantage on it if it relies on sight. Giant eagle has a language. <laughs> yes, giant eagle has a language. <laughs> <laughs> How did you not know that? It's one of the things about the giant eagles. Sorry, man. Ah, that's why. Because I don't even have Hawk in the stat blocks. So that's that'd probably be a good thing to add. Uh, there. And there. And then we'll do... Sure, we'll just do that. Who cares? I don't need to worry about making a token for it just yet. Alright, uh, you should have a hawk now. <clears throat> In the character sheet page, you should have a hawk now. Are you there? Badoop. Everyone's oh, there? No, he's here. He is? Alright, well, fuck it. I'm not waiting any longer. I'm gonna roll it for him. What was it? Advantage on perception checks. Yeah, sure. Well, that, you know what? I'm gonna do that again. Hey! Okay. What was the result? Uh, yeah, 20 on the second roll you made. Oh, well. Fuck it. Sure, natural 20. Okay. Um, I don't know if you can hear me, but the, the you two can. Um, the, um, and he's relaying this to you, so it makes sense. The, the orcs that are digging things out of the, the dirt have a, a pattern to them. They move in almost like assembly lines or like, like ant lines. Um, they're they're spread out they're spread out over um, a large area but you can he can tell that there's a distinct pattern to the way that they're working it's not like uh, you know everybody mob the sand dune and and throw dust everywhere it's a coordinated um, it's a coordinated behavior Okay, so they're, they're just very organized in how they're mining for something, it seems. Or just digging in general. Yep. Okay. Um. But it's a very, it's a very, it's like, it's like watching, it's like watching a colony of ants take, take, um, you know, a, a piece of fallen fruit into the, into the nest. Right. It's like there's a hive mind in a sense, right? Yep. It, that's okay. that's what it seems like. It seems like there's, there. I mean, it's it's very it's very coordinated and very well structured, but it's not it's not typical. Natural. It's, it's something off yeah. about it. There's no free will about that. I got you. Well, you can make that a conclusion by yourself. You have no idea, but it's very right. it's very strange, strange behavior. Like you know, like if you were like you, you have to you've learned how to dig trenches. You've had to do that before. This, this way. like you, you've you've seen how how people work together. They kind of work like individually, but as a team. These yeah. people are working one hundred percent as a team. 
A thought occurs to me. Greg said that his tribe started acting different when the portal opened. Yeah, and then, I did say and that. And now our link is being interfered with. What if those are connected? And the thing we're dealing with here has ways of of interacting with other people's minds and possibly controlling them. That's... that's scary. <laughs> but yeah, that's definitely a possibility. <clears throat> I'm trying to get... I don't... Uh, VG, could I roll history to see if there's any creature in my, like, studies or research or anything like that that could, like, you know, that could mess with people's minds or is known, like, stories about them or... Mm -hmm. Go for Can it. I assist? Yeah. Mm, I would say you'd have to make a separate roll. Okay, okay, at least give him an inspiration. Sure. Inspired. We could tell him a story about your people and see if that jogs his memory. Yeah, no way it could be religion. No, there's no way it could try religion here. It's a D8, right, still? Yes. Uh, just normal? Yep. 19 plus 8? Or what? Plus a D8. Plus D8. Bonk. 23. 23. I mean, it's scary to think about, but, um, to, there, there aren't, there isn't really anything specific that you can recall. <laughs> There's nothing that you would have had access to that really would have jogged your memory on anything like this. Um, right. You know that there are uh, there are ways to control people's minds through magic um, or control at least their actions and what they can do. Obviously, right. zone of truth is a thing. and, and command, uh, command, yeah. Command and all that stuff, yeah. But this is not instantaneous. It's persistent and it's going on for a long time. So... If it's magic, it's very strong magic. If it's something else, you have no idea what it is. Okay, gotcha. Well, I think we're... We don't really have much information on this, do we? I think, like, the most we're going to be able to do is dive in and see what we can do. Now, I will say that Theo does have a role mm -hmm. on this because he is smart boy, so I'm going to give him a role. Inspired. Normal. I say normal. I don't and... use my inspirations or anything else, so this will, I can at least be somewhat useful with that. Yeah. Hey -o. So Theo gets a 22 as well. Whoa. Yeah. Nothing that he can really remember. The fuck. <laughs> He's like, it's it's not. I've not read anything about this specifically. There are creatures out there in the universe that can fiddle with minds, but in this case, I've not seen behavior like this before. Not on this scale. I've never heard of this behavior before, either. Fuck, if you haven't read about it and all you do is read, you're fucked. Well, I mean, my studies were interrupted by the war happening, um, a tiny bit, so I, I kind of s skipped the, uh, the outsiders, of course. All right. You know, fast tracking and all that. Um, probably seems like it would be useful now, in hindsight. Nothing we can control now, right? Well, in the infinite possibilities of the universe, oh, technically God I damn could. It. <laughs> I could go back, maybe. We'll see. Okay, thanks for making that brief. I was worried where that was going. You're welcome. Now, how the hell are we going to do this? Something okay. knows we're here. Clearly. Well, that hasn't stopped us before. Yeah. Uh, no point in being stealthy. I think we should just go in and try our luck. Alright. I'm just going to waltz in there. Like we own the place. Should we have protections in place? 
Uh, most likely then. Uh, is there any mental protections you can have? Because um, I'm going to already have my... Hmm. I'll look through my spells. Well, I've got some things, not a lot of them. Do I have that spell? He's going to scroll through his spell scroll uh, spell book real quick, looking for something that might be able to help you. I've got a couple things. Well, I don't know if one second longer. Oh, you're back. Welcome we can hear you. Welcome I don't back. remember exactly how the spell works. I don't think it works for men for stuff. I oh, I don't think I know anything. So we. Well. Uh, maybe nah. Probably not. Um, let's see. How long does that one last? One minute. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, I can do things. I have many things in this book. I have probably too many things in this book, but that's not my fault. I have a lot of money. I... We could disguise ourselves? Perhaps fuck with our number a bit? No, that won't work. He already knows we're here. Again, I'm, I'm also looking for protection for our heads. If he can be in our heads, he might be able to influence them, you know? I don't want that. Sure. Um, I think all I can really do is prepare for stuff to happen to us. Right. That's so fine. that's what I'm going to do. Uh, let's see. Let's do that one. That one sounds fun and interesting. And I don't know why I don't use it more often. Why not? Alright. Uh, well, I've got some things. Um, let's see. I've got... I've got a spell that I've not used super often. Um, but essentially it can give us a little bit of premonition to what happens next and allow us to avoid dangerous things or making mistakes. Now, see why not? Uh, yeah. I can cast it uh, I can cast it a number of times. It'll take us a few minutes, but I could give it to all of you. Sure. Definitely. Okay. Well, I had to take ten minutes to, shoot to hide the ship anyways, so... But you've already hidden the ship. Uh, yeah, give me five minutes. I'll um, I'll fix this up. And he begins to cast uh, Fortune's Favor on everybody. So this lasts for an hour. Um, and essentially it gives you a luck point. So whenever you make an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw before the spell ends, it can uh, you can dismiss the spell on yourself and roll an additional d20 and choose whichever the d20s you want to use. So that's basically a luck point on yourself. Hell yeah. And then the other thing is if you if someone attacks you and there's an attack roll made, you can also give that creature disadvantage on the attack roll. And of course if you have disadvantage or advantage you roll three dice. And choose whichever one to use if you get rid of the spell. So what I heard is, when I have disadvantage to grapple it, I use the luck point. Actually, it only takes one minute, so then he would need... So he's gonna spend his... He's gonna spend his big spell getting rid of any failures, so he's gonna cast it at 6th level to be able to target all 5 of you. Shoo! Let's hope we use it. Yeah. I mean, let's hope we don't need it in the next hour. Um, Alright, well, I'm ready to go. I guess I'm ready. You're all set. Excellent. Begin to march toward Old Cancel. 
Um, now, are you just are you gonna fucking waltz in there, guns blazing? Or are you gonna try and you know sneak around the side, maybe find an entrance, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? I'm thinking this is a dude art knows he, we're here. Yeah. Are we going kinda... in or are we going sneaky peeky like? I think because this dude literally knows we're here, as in he quite literally talked in our brains. There's no uh, blind stuff. Yeah, right? Like. Fair enough. Homie really just oh. added himself to the group chat. Like. <laughs> he kind of did. <laughs> It's pretty rude, not gonna lie. It's fucking How much we spent on that? It's fucking booty. Hello there. <laughs> well, now we know that then to links won't just work. Or well, at least, like, they won't be private from his boys. I always had a worry that would happen. Yeah. Never thought it was possible. Well, well, yeah. Maybe if you, if you weren't worried about it, it wouldn't have happened. Maybe that's my what bad, happened. My bad. It's always your fault, man. <sighs> Alright. Yeah. It's my fault we got this far in the first place, you're right. It's my fault we, was, we survived Labor's tomb. My fault we, we uh, killed that dragon. That was all me. I, that was... And that other dragon. You did nothing. You were in the corner the whole time. That's how I remember it. Definitely didn't banish every enemy that you guys have come across. It's large. Just in the corner. Holding the bow. Yeah. Looking pretty. I right, listen. I can get up there and scrappy. Oh shit, the last time I said that I got fucking almost eaten by snake. Yeah. Oh, don't don't talk about that. <laughs> like Jack says, like, jobs that like, oh, holy shit. <laughs> that, was, that was a while ago. Holy shit. <sighs> yeah, right. Feels like a long time ago, but it really wasn't that long. I mean, it was what, a few months? Yeah. Not even a year ago. Not even a year. Holy shit. Small world. Time, time flies when you're. No. I thought you were gonna say having fun. I was gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I was not gonna call this fun. Time flies when you're fighting the uh, evil forces yeah. trying to take Time over your world. Time flies when you're saving the world. Time flies, Time flies when you don't roll for random encounters. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Alrighty. So, getting closer and closer to the city, you guys are basically just going to fucking waltz right in. You guys, I'm assuming, have prepared weapons out and like pointed at everybody. Um, entering the, the boundaries of the city, though... Uh, you are walking up to this assembly line of orcs, uh, literally shoveling dust out into gigantic bins um, and dragging them, dragging the bins away into the mountain. Uh, almost like a like dragging a sled full of dirt, basically, into the mountain, one after another. Um, none of them seem to pay you any mind. They don't even look like they notice you're there. They just keep working. Alright, um... I'm not gonna complain. I think we should just walk past them. As you guys are walking past the assembly line, that familiar voice comes into your head again. You know, I really didn't like this place covered in so much sand and dirt. You figured the old aesthetic would be a lot more pleasing. Well, you know what they say about sand. It's coarse, rough, gets everywhere. Alright, um... Take two points of psychic to <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Hold on, actually. Actually, there is something that's going to happen to you for that. Oh, that's yes. going. That's going to not just be me saying two, two points. It's going to actually be a thing that can happen. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. Me making a bad joke is finally coming back to haunt me. Um let's see, what is it? <laughs> Make a charisma saving throw. 
And my close stuff to track says for Aura. Yeah, you're always on the moon together. 14. No go. So you take... Uh... Hang on. Like Seven that. points of psychic damage <laughs> from, oh, from a backlash. Your head just goodness. hurts really badly all of a sudden, almost like a a temporary, um, a temporary intense migraine that causes you to like go down to your knees almost real quick. Like you're oh fuck, that was not fun. Do you know that that? Do you know that they feel this all the time? All of them. Every single one. Do not test me, worm. See how you're like testing my axe. Don't talk shit to the guy in our heads. As you continue to move forward, uh, you can see um, all of these these people, these you know, women, children, men. All of them are absolutely fucking yoked, dude. Like the the kids even like look like they look like that one Russian kid who can do like fifty handstands and lift fifty pound you know bar like dumbbells. Everyone is absolutely completely shredded. Um. And they're all extremely strong. They all also, on their armor, have a very specific symbol. Um, I'll try and draw it. You guys are on the map, right? Mm -hmm. I'll try and draw it for you, but give me a second. I'll do this as well so that we have it. And then... Okay. It looks like that, and then... Okay, yeah, that's really bad, but pretend it's a slope oh, shit. Yeah, I just see a line. Shit, god damn it. I hate it when I, god damn it. I hate it when I do that. There we go. It kinda looks like I mean that looks rising like shit, sun. but it's a rising sun basically over a horizon. Devils in the house of the rising sun. Kind of. That's more or less what you see. That that's uh, on uh, a lot of their clothing, on their tabards. Some of them are wearing necklaces with the same uh, symbol on it. Um, some of them have a lot of them have tattoos depicting similar imagery or that imagery. As you continue to walk by. Eventually, you guys come to uh, the entrance to the to the cave, the big open maw of this skeletalized purple worm. All right. Oh shit! So we're like approaching a, a purple worm, basically. Corpse of one. Yeah. It's a. It's the like a skeleton of. Born. Okay. If you can imagine that, like the head, and then it yeah, yeah, extends into a vertebrae that goes into the ground. Grant, the, Grant, that implies the purple worms like have a fucking skeletal structure, which is surprising. I would assume something that big kind of has to. And also, it's a cool visual, so eh. Fuck it, right? Okay, oh, fair enough. Did you still want to talk to the orc there, Terry? Uh, yeah. No, I want, uh, did, well, did you hear what I said before I cut out? No. Or I said, yeah, no, time flies when you're fighting the forces of evil, try trying to take over your world. No offense that might. <laughs> no offense, nice. You know, I just wanted to know that my tribe doesn't really care about the war. We've never fought on the front lines. We've never killed anyone on your side. Yeah, that's why there's no offense. Otherwise, I would have fucking killed you. 
I know what no offense uh, means. All right. <laughs> I'm aware you. Oh yeah. But uh, you Ryan, seem to be taking offense. Enough. <laughs> Fucking hell! Drop it. <laughs> you see, Brag is like as you guys are walking past these guys. Brag is like waving his hands in front of their eyes and like, "Hey, Duna, come on, wake up, hello." Not working. He's a half orc, so he's not particularly well built in comparison to a lot of his brethren. He can't stop them unless he were to try and combat them. Um, I'm, I'm going to try something. Uh, be be on your guard. Something might go wrong here. Oh shit! Great. Uh, I'm going to uh, walk over to one of them. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm not going to. I'm just going to look at the one that he that he that Greg was talking to, and I'm going to say, and I'm going to try a dispel magic on him, on that person. Okay. Put dispel magic in the chat real quick. Oh, you did. Never mind. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> um, the spell fades. No effect. Whatever is affecting these people is not a spell effect. Oh, that's even worse than I thought then. Uh, you... Uh, oh no. Uh, Theo, this, uh, whatever this is, this isn't magic. At least spells, because dispelling it d did nothing. Oh. Well, that's very worrying. But they're not attacking us. Yet. Let's try and keep it that way? Question mark? Great. Alright, let's keep moving, boys. That's all we can really do now. Maybe we should ask them whatever the fuck in our heads. Who are you? I'll just start with, you know, the, the basics. Come inside and find out, little paladin. Oh, well, isn't that inviting? You're not inviting the rest of us? Just Drax, so I feel a little bit left out. Oh, but of course you're welcome. All of you are. I haven't had fresh company in days. Well, uh, uh, seeing the state of your last company, I don't know, I don't know mate, doesn't seem very uh, inviting. Oh, don't mind the help. They're just doing their jobs. Making this place a little more aesthetically pleasing. What was that noise? That's out of character. <laughs> Aesthetically pleasing. He said they're just, yeah, don't mind the help, they're just making this place a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Am I pleasing. the only one hearing this squish? There's like a, a little bit of like, in the background that I heard. I don't think so. Are, are you sure? Is there no one else there? Uh, is it is it the music? Cause I I've is had it, it turned off, so I don't know. Is is there someone else on the line? Hello. Okay. So what do you think about squishing noises on here? Um, There's no squishing noises in the music. I kind of swear there was like a little bit of a squishing noise, and I was like, I was like, what the fuck was that? No, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. All right, same. Well, I'm I'm just going delusional. All right, lovely. I already knew this. What happens when you hear voices in your head? I've been, I've been hearing those before I got this mental link, so... A lot of them are quite annoying, actually. As you guys are walking into the maw of the, uh, <laughs> of the purple worm, um, you walk past the maw of the purple worm and through uh, this destroyed, like, bizarre area. Um, and the... You hear this shifting sound behind you as the last of you go by, and you can see the jaws of the purple worm, the teeth, close up over right behind you. Now, you can get out through the sides. That's not a problem. It's probably just for effect. Gotcha, okay. Um, we, as we can... Their bone, probably fairly breakable. If it, even if they were blocking this. Yeah, possibly. 
You guys are walking past, like, you know, destroyed tents. Uh, there's a lot of um, rotten food product still laying out in the sun. <laughs> uh, unrefrigerated, flies covering it all over the place. And the smell of rotting meat and rotting vegetables mixed together. Um, you can see that there was one stall that sold uh, uh, gemstones, uncut, rough gemstones that have been fashioned into some kind of jewelry or adornment. Um, used to sell that. Uh, it looks like whoever did is long gone. The shop is basically deserted. This whole area. Okay. Where are you? Can we speak to face to face? Well, that's what I'm trying to get you to do, my friend. I'm inside, and I'd love to meet you all. Step into the mountain, and a guide will show you to me. Alright. Fun, fun, fun. A guide, eh? Fancy service, never got that one before. Yeah. As you guys move forward into the mountain, uh, you enter, um, you enter basically a, an entryway that looks, uh, again, very dwarven. Um, you can see on the walls there are murals carved of dwarven, um, uh, dwarven warriors and great leaders, and memorializing battles of the past, fighting monsters and such. But a lot of them have been uh, scratched out, uh, damaged. Um, it seems like the, the orcs in this place use it for, you know, they don't really give a fuck about any of the history or the murals or anything like that. They're more, you know, they just like, they, they spill food on it, they have, you know, brawls, there's old blood stains and shit, like, these, this place is pretty fucked up. Um, however, you do see that there are, uh several orcs in the, on the inside of this that are scrubbing feverishly at the floor with old rags, uh, with buckets beside them filled with water. Um, just uh, trying to clean basically everything. Uh, people on the walls using, um, using, you know, same rags or, uh, like makeshift, uh, brooms made of dry desert grass to... Uh, sweep up the dust and dirt and clean the murals uh, of as much stain and wear as possible. While another group of orcs are on the far end of, of each mural, um, re-chiseling parts of the stone that have worn away over time. Uh, at the far end of the room, there are uh, a few doors to go through, one of which has uh, a very tall orc in full-on purple Warm plate mail. Standing oh, by. Oh shit! And he's holding a very large, uh, like, it, it, like to a normal person, it would be a two-handed spear. To him, he's hafting it in one hand. Right. Is it this orc is basically like eight foot? Like, how big is this motherfucker? He's, al he's almost, almost nine feet tall. Jesus. He's wow, he's ginormous. He's huge for for a, a medium creature. Right. And on his chest, on inside the purple worm male is, is carved that symbol, that sun symbol. Um, but it's inlaid with gold. And it has the purple worm armor has been inlaid with gold filigree, um, depicting uh, you know, different almost like tribal tattoo lines right. etched throughout. Uh, does anybody have any ideas what the fuck that symbol is? Because it's got to mean something. Oh yeah. It's a symbol of our tribe. It's the rising sun. My tribe is called the Sunborn. Sorry, the Sunbound. I read that wrong. The Sunbound. <laughs> We're, um... 
we followed. There That's goes my immersion. And that oh. is our leader on the other end of the floor. I suspect he's been taken seeing as he's not freaking out about any of this. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you more later. Yeah, when we're not in the belly of the beast, right? Yeah, I'm a little freaked out, not gonna lie. I'll blame you. Uh, just a little scary. Welcome to the entry hall. As my guests, I've procured a very special one to guide you into my embrace. This person was probably the hardest I've had uh, convincing him to join me. But nonetheless, he fell, just as all the others have. The once leader of this barbaric tribe will guide you in further into the mountain. All of course, right. before I invite you into my into my good graces, I'd love to test you and your abilities, see exactly what you can do. But that will come at a later time. Has our stories now traveled? Now, oh, we need to be t if you please, follow the large purple man. <laughs> All right. So, you know, it's like, oh yeah, no, that was that was mentally in our heads. So we didn't hear all that. Fuck. Uh, I'm actually surprised to, to meet someone who's actually, you know, taller than me that isn't a fuck alive. Yeah. What story? <laughs> We've seen many things that are taller than you in our trap. And you're surprised that orc is taller than you. Well, yes, yeah, <sighs> giants are supposed to be big. Dragons are supposed to be big. I remember when 5'11 was tall. As you approach uh, the door... <laughs> as you approach the door, uh, Brag steps out in front of you all and uh, kneels with his head down uh, in front of the big, uh, the large orcish man um, and says a few a few words in hushed orcish the um, one of those understands orcish, I don't remember which one I, I don't know yeah but I'm not, I don't think we're going to overhear him murmuring it it's, it's, it's a, he says it in a whisper it's, not something that you guys can pick up on. Um, and after after a couple seconds, he stands up and gives a a salute before picking up his great sword and rejoining the group. The purple figure doesn't seem to react at all, uh, and instead just reaches over and opens the door and gestures for you to follow him. I will follow him behind. Yep, follow him. Also, I'm assuming we haven't put away our weapons since we walked in, right? Nope. I, yeah. I would assume not, unless you want to. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I'm assuming been, everyone has everything prepared out. Yeah, I've been having East Grabber hefted on my shoulder this whole fucking time. <laughs> I have my bow out, but I don't have an arrow doctor. You know, but... Darn it, this is kind of special. Not yeah, but having weapon ammo is anything in D and D five E. Uh, yeah, right. How actually? How did the cave walls look like? How did the actual city like look in general? On the inside of this thing, um, I mean, it's it's seen a lot of wear and tear, and since it's stonework and dwarvish stonework at that, you can assume that this is a very old old place that has been co-opted by the orcs taken over here. Um, if you want any more, go ahead and make a history check for me. Mm. 
this is literally where that history, like that dwarf thing, where it's like, oh, yes, when you roll a history check on stonework. Yeah, this is the one and place like, where that makes sense. Never do anything. This is the one place. Twenty. Okay. Um, old Canso is something that you've read about before, just in passing, um, and you've also heard it talked about uh, from some of your dwarvish members in the Ranger Corps. Um, the Old Canso was one of the only uh, above-ground dwarven settlements centuries ago, like five five hundred years ago, during the existence of Lion House. It was one of the only above-ground uh, uh, cities that existed. Now, um, it's occupied by a famous warlord. You know about that much and his band of raiders. Um, that they've basically moved in and made this their home after taking over and killing <laughs> all of the all the dwarves that live there. Damn. Old habits die hard. Yeah, seriously. Give me a second. I need to get my story straight. <clears throat> Uh, so yeah, that's basically what happened. So um, I would also say that Orion kind of relays a lot of that to you guys. Um, and then the voice in your head comes back. Well, it's a little bit more than that. Wait, you see... You the, your dialogue dump decks? I think my own uh, Discord fucked on me on my end too. Oh sure. Uh, Old Canso was one of the only above ground dwarven settlements centuries ago. It was a lion house settlement. Um that was taken over and co-opted by the orcs when they took over Lion House and made it into Gorgon House. It was part of their, um, their, like, strategy to go to the outlying settlements, take them over, and then slowly enclose on, on the mountain from all sides, on the Ottoman Spire. Um, and since then, it's been occupied by a famous warlord, or uh, famous warlords of the past, but this one is slightly more famous. Um, uh, Orion will tell... I'll, I'll give you the name. Uh, this this big, large, purple figure is Krim Bloodspear. K-R-Y-M-M Bloodspear. Uh, he has many, many legends tacked on to him. Um, from the story of his origin, where he went out on his own as part of his initiation and killed a purple worm all by himself. Uh, to yeah, fighting off... Yeah, to fighting off various... Uh, large groups of um, dangerous animals like uh, Ankeg, Umber Hulks, Bullets, those kind of things um, by himself. Like, he goes out regularly and just just goes out and kills things and brings it back. Like, it's just something he does. He just disappears for like three days, comes back with some gigantic corpse that the tribe can use. Um, usually when they're running low on supplies. Um, the rest of his tribe venerate him as a god essentially, or a demigod. Um, the reincarnation of some warrior spirit that they all hold. Um, and it's basically like this uh, cult of personality that he's built around himself. Um, in terms of the like ideology of the tribe itself, that's something you probably ask your orcish friend later, if he survives. <laughs> um... I don't think you would know a whole lot about Orcish tribes being from the north, Grisha, and Draxos. You would probably be the only other one to have studied anything about them. Just because, you know, you're paladin on the opposite side. So what I'll do is I'll give you a history check. Right to dodge To get any more out of it. Why did I... Uh, well, because my grip was grabbing s spirit brass armor. Why did I do that? Hmm. <laughs> Not 20! Woo Not too bad. So in terms of the ideology, the, the Sunbound are um, basically religious zealots. Uh, and they fight with reckless abandon because they believe that... Um, here, let me pull up the actual notes here so that I can tell you exactly what's going on. But um, Blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, they're, they're expert 
expert monster hunters. Uh, they do so because uh, they see killing killing monsters as a, a badge of honor, and the bigger the kill, the better. Mm -hmm. um, as a uh, of course, as a you know, as the rite of passage, you you normally you would get a group of like twenty or thirty orcs and run out into the desert, find a purple worm, and kill it. And whoever comes back takes pieces of the carapace to use as armor. Um, the more worms you kill, the more pieces of armor you get. Typically, you don't see more than, like, two, maybe three pieces on an orc. Right. Purple worms are very hard to kill. Um, this dude is decked out in full plate. Because he killed the, the whole thing by himself, he got all of that carapace to use as his armor, and he came back decked out, and everyone was like, Oh my god, what the fuck? Um, what the fuck did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um... Now I'm just thinking of all the giant monsters we slay. Like, we've slayed two dragons, a giant lord, a few other fuck yeah. big fucking things. Yeah. But keep in mind that a lot of those things were not on this continent to be hunted down and killed. <laughs> uh, they came back for some reason. They were gone. Banished away. So the, the biggest monsters, the most dangerous monsters, were in and around Gorgon House. So yeah. they saw that as, well, yeah. we have the biggest monsters... We're going to go kill them, and we're going to be the greatest warriors ever. Um, and we're going to love doing it. And they built this whole culture around hunting and killing monsters, basically. This is not so, a reference to Monster Hunter. I was not playing Monster Hunter when I wrote this. I bought Monster Hunter years later, and only then realized they're basically the Monster Hunters. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, uh, they use the pieces and the bits and pieces from the, their kills, obviously, to make their, their clothing, to craft their uh, canvas and tents, to... Um, yeah, create you know, weapons and tools. Um, they don't use gigantic fucking weapons except for this one guy. Um, but one of the one of the more interesting things that you've heard, Draxos, with that natural twenty, is that um, because of their their zealous devotion to this one guy, he derives a small amount of power from it. In the right. similar he way that, in a similar way that you derive power from worshiping your god. Okay, um, and the way that these people gain power from him because if they worship him, or is it the other way around? They, they get they give him power by believing in him, that right. by believing the that same he is their god, they grant him uh, a semblance of a semblance of magical strength. Right. Um, just the the legends that surround him, the fact that he walks among them and they can see him walking around, and that he is like basically their. He's basically their Jesus. Yeah. Uh, means that he derives a little bit of power from that belief. From all those people believing in him as, like... Yeah. Whole, yeah, gotcha. Um, and that has extended his life for a very long time. It has also... Uh, it has also created, you know, a cult of personality around him. So they're, these people are 100% devoted to their chief. They'll always listen to what he says. And they will do whatever it takes... To, uh, to protect him and to protect the village. And they don't give a fuck about anything else. They don't, no, care. they don't care who the leader of Gorgon House is. They don't give a fuck who anyone else is in the desert. They firmly believe that he is like their god and no one else compares to him. So they will listen to him above all, above all others, including uh, the leader of... Um, of Gorgon House. And in fact, uh, Krim and uh, the leader of Gorgon House have butt heads on several occasions over many issues, because especially during this war, um, which is why you haven't seen the Sunbound before. They're they they were like, "Nah, we're not getting involved in this shit." All they're we want to kill monsters. Faction. Yeah. Um, if they were to join, they would be a force to be reckoned with. Uh, they yeah. they're all insanely ripped monster hunters that kill some of the most dangerous animals on the planet before anyone else had any idea, you know, how to do any of that. Um, so they're, they're like the, um, they're like a weird neutral middle ground that exists out there that you're aware of, mainly because of the, the zealous, you know, magic that he holds. So, I mean, obviously, an orc that holds paladin magic is a little bit weird 
somebody picked up on that eventually. And they were like, yeah. That's, we should keep an eye on that. Hey, uh, write right, that now, down. Now I, a, now, now, I have a question. Uh, how, how significant is the guy, because Grisha killed the guy who had, like, an entire, like, arm brace or, like, arm guard for, of a purple worm. Like, one would be, like, the... He had one piece, which means that he, he survived his first hunt of a purple worm. So, he's, uh, you know, a standard male orc from this tribe. Still very strong. Very much a uh, a pinnacle of orcish physiology and idealism. Um, among other people, he's basic. These guys are basically like the Spartans of orcish society. Like among their own people, he's not super impressive. And he still still helped kill the purple worm. Great, awesome. But that's what's expected of you. Everywhere else, everyone's like, "Oh my god, he fucking killed the purple worm. This guy's fucking insane. Look how jacked he is." That kind of thing. Awesome. Alright. Yeah. I want to relay most of my inf any information I had on that as we walk to the group. Just like, this is what and, I was able to. Yeah. And from what Break told me, said, oh, well, what Break said that by killing the one who had this gauntlet and taking it, that, that has some meaning, I guess, suppose? Yeah. If you, if you lose to someone else, you can lay claim to their their trophies, just you know, that's how orcish society works. In a in a in a fair duel, in a in a uh, uh, you know uh, a bout of combat that was decided and, and set up, um, when you when one party is defeated, they lay claim to your your things as a a veneration of you, number one, because you are a worthy opponent enough to to fight them. So they take a piece of you with them to remind to remind them that you were a a strong warrior, a uh, a warrior worthy of fighting them in the first place. Um, and then of course the purple the purple worm armband. If you kill one of those guys, it's like well, fuck. You're really strong because you're taking down you're taking down a someone who has been trained at birth to hunt the most dangerous creatures on the planet, and you. This person, who's smaller than basically all those creatures, and arguably less dangerous than some of them, defeated this guy? Shit. That's respectable. Okay, good to know. Woohoo! Alright. Um... So, moving on. As you guys walk through the halls and past uh, several more orcs that are working, uh, chiseling stone and doing other things, um... You come upon uh, a large central room. Um, it's a, a large, uh, basically triangular room um, with one door at one end um, and two doors at the back end. You guys came through the door at the quote-unquote top of the triangle and you can see the other two doors on the other end of the chamber. Um, in the center of this room is a large sand pit. Uh, and spread around the edges of the room uh, are uh, old stone weapon racks, now left empty. Um, also on the uh, on the on each of the pillars, there are um, like uh, uh, like dyed red uh, leather banners with that same sunbound symbol on them spread about. Um, at the far end of the room, between the two doors, is a, a stone throne, essentially, um, with that symbol carved on the top of it and overlaid with gold and gold filigree inside of the throne itself. Uh, you watch as uh, the purple worm clad guy, Krim, Krim Bloodspear, takes hefts his weapon up, steps into the center of the pit, and lowers it down as if he's ready to fight. This will be your test. Oh, I want to see how you compare to this guy. He quite hard to take over, especially considering the power he wields. 
So we're going to see just how helpful you'll be to me. Take him down. And you will be rewarded. Die, and well, uh, you'll be dead. Good luck. And with that, Krim Bloodspear charges at you. And that's where we're going to end today's session. Because Orion is gone and his, his, his fucking internet sucks. And so is right. Magic. Um, I have one quick question, actually, from that. Sure. I was going to ask the, the homie before he, you know, left the group call. Um, could it, Do we have to kill him? Or can we knock him out? That's up to you. Okay. You don't, you don't know what this control is that's been put over him. You don't know a method to break it yet. Um, but, I mean, it's up to you. If you, It's up to you guys. Mm -hmm. like, uh, I'll just plead my case we'll out. Figure, I mean, we'll figure that out next week when you guys right? fight him. <laughs> I'm going to have... I'm going to take I mean, this whole... Uh, the first time we're going to try and save him, but if, but if it's either we die or he dies... No, oh, yeah, right. And like, whatever. We'll see no, how... I, 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 don't know, I don't know how Theo feels about this. He's probably like, I'll just fucking kill him. <laughs> Right. Well, I'm, I was trying to think about the war, and it's like, hey, let's not kill the guy who you know is the leader of you know the Spartans. You okay. know, and because yeah, then they're that, gonna be like that went so well for the Persians. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Up to you. Like I said, nah, respect. We shall see," said the blind man. Yeah, exactly. Alrighty, cool. So I will see you guys next week. Uh, hopefully for a longer session than one and a half hours, but. Uh, but yeah, I mean, maybe, you know, maybe the polar vortex will be gone by then. Maybe the fucking, uh, the internet will be fixed and maybe the laptops will not be broken. Wait, we shall what? See. Okay, I just looked at someone having a conversation with my other servers over a... Oh, oh you wait till the recording's over. Yeah, probably. Um, so yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Bye.